How is it going? It's the Foz, and I'm here today to complain a little bit, but also to just kind of discuss. So, we've been having some threads on the forums with people complaining about certain cards, specifically a certain deck. And if you're looking at these six cards, you know exactly what deck I'm talking about. Good old Dragon Combo, everybody's least favorite deck, right? So what I want to talk about here is the, the most commonly complained about cards that are in the deck or just generally played. But what I want to talk about is it's not going to be that simple to just pick one of these and change it and say, oh yeah, now the deck is going to be fine. What I'm going to try to explain is that each of these cards contributes differently to the problem. And you could argue that any of them is the cause, and is that if you took away that card, the problem would be solved. Well, I'm here to tell you that it's not the case, is that if you just took away one of those things, the deck would just reform itself in some different identity. Now, that being said, of these six cards, there are bigger offenders and smaller offenders, and I'll point those out. So as I go through these cards, I'm going to say why I think they're a problem, but why you could also argue that... You know, even if you remove them, then the deck, or just the general archetype can function differently. So these cards are strictly relating to the dragon combo deck. You could also easily put Reflector here, or Word of Grace, but those are part of a different deck. So let's kick it off with our good buddy, KFC, the chicken. The chicken has made quite a showing. The fact that it's even included in dragon combo is astonishing, right? But the reason it's possible is because you're running Rage for the dragon, and if you add Rage, the chicken suddenly gets Swift. And then it's like an extra burn card. And because the deck also has Obelisk of Unity, if you go double blue, purple, and red, you could actually give it four attack. And you could give it a fourth ability, such as Deadly, or Unstoppable, or Ranged. Th this card is a little bit more separate from the rest, because it's also played in like the Kayano deck, and it does exactly the same thing. It's just a ridiculously efficient one drop like just absurdly efficient that being said i do consider it one of the smaller offenders because even if you like delete a chicken dragon combo does not change they just run a different card like chicken was just nice to have there like okay i can run it and it's a swift card yay put it in but even if if not they'll just run a different card so it's not gonna change much that being said a one mana three one swift ranged is probably ridiculous However, as I said, it's a smaller offender because it is kind of enabled by New Horizons, which is one of the big offenders in my opinion, and is actually the least talked about of the cards which I think are problematic. Mostly because I'm actually the only one talking about it, and I'm the only one who's actually brought it up. Some people have supported it, but it's not really like a big opinion out there. The other cards like Cataclysm, Despina are the most commonly complained about cards. I still think New Horizons plays a big part because it's what enables you to just catapult forward with your levels and mana and be able to play these really big cards really quickly. Generally, if you look at a dragon deck, the dragon combo deck, they don't run any early game. It's astonishing because the Dominion early game is actually really good. You know that card, Shadow Step Assassin, the 1-2 one, Swift, 1-2-3 uh, Speed Deadly, used to be run in every Dominion deck, because it was really good. But they don't even bother with it anymore, they just run a bunch of ramp, they ramp right past the early game, right into Cataclysm, and then right into their Carthuses, Dragons, Biddings, and all that other wonderful stuff that we know. So New Horizons, I think, is a bit of a problem. It's a little too good. It... It lets, makes it way too easy to get to four aspects, and it should take effort to get to four aspects because those cards are very powerful. Cards like Karthas and Dragon are very powerful, but that's fine because they take effort to get there. Every level you go is another card you have to spend and another mana that you're not getting. Whereas if your opponent went mana, he gets a card back and a mana, so it's an investment. So getting to four aspects takes some work. Well, it takes a lot less work because of this card. So, I think actually hitting this, or just like removing it completely, would have a big impact. But, the dragon combo deck could just start running early game. They would put in Vampiric Ashes and Shadow Step Assassin, and they'd be able to hold their own in the early game. Although, I think it would feel more fair 
because they wouldn't be able to just run right past you in the early game and they'd actually have to fight you on an even ground and more importantly without the ramp you'd kind of have an idea of how much time you have before their combo goes off like with red dragon you know that once they get to 12 mana they can do a 20 damage combo by playing dragon five damage to face refresh and then five damage five damage five damage you know that's 20 damage that's insta win if you don't heal but you would know okay he's got three aspects and seven mana i've got what six turns to do this but with horizons and power surge power surge i didn't include on this list because it's kind of the weaker of the two anyways new horizons is the main representation uh, they could they could start the game with three new horizons or they could start with none you never know so it's kind of hard to deal with it in a sense because you don't know how much time you have and you're kind of at their mercy now yes you could say cataclysm is also a big problem and we're gonna get to that we're gonna get to cataclysm that's the other big offender along with this pina but new horizons i think is kind of like that sleeper problem where it's it's just it makes the the idea of going up levels which is supposed to be an investment it makes it too easy because you can do it in addition to gaining mana and with chicken it makes chicken it's what makes chicken so ridiculous because you can go turn one chicken and then turn to horizons into like nature and that chicken already gains range and can kill like a zombie legion there or another chicken it's dangerous i think this may be one uh the the biggest offender in my opinion along with basic despina actually bigger than cataclysm believe it or not and i'll explain that as I, when i get to it but yeah new horizons has been on my radar for some time and will continue to be on my radar because it's it, it's being played like everywhere now kyano decks are running it so they can get to grand reunion faster and i feel like we're just skipping a part of the game i'm not saying that i like early game aggro stuff but you shouldn't be able to just bypass it because the other flip side is if you don't draw these cards, you're just gonna die, right? Because you're stuck with nothing to play. I feel it'd be a little bit more fair if you had to just play creatures, because it'd be a bit more interaction going on. And honestly, Dragon Combo would probably be just fine, because Vampiric Ashes and Shadow Step Assassin are really good two drops. Just put those in your deck instead, and it'll take a little longer to get to your combo. But it should, right? It's a, it's a control deck. You know, none of that being four mana ahead of your opponent garbage. Moving on, the Red Dragon, I put it on the list because even though it's been mostly a like a tame card, I feel like the fact that it can do so much burn damage by itself is maybe a bit of an issue. It is definitely a smaller offender because without basic Despina, the damage potential of this card is only like maybe 10 damage. If you have 12 mana, you play it, you do the effect twice, you do 10 damage. It's pretty devastating, but you do have a chance to deal with it. If you remember, in the past when Burning Rage was still good, Red Dragon was run in a Mono Rage, Burning Rage deck, where you just played it alongside Phoenix, alongside a bunch of spells and a bunch of aggressive cards, and it just served as a powerful threat. You could even play it on Curve with 4 aspects, 4 mana, if you got like 2 Burning Rages, and it would just stay there, because if they can't deal with it, the, the Dragon's gonna devastate them. That's what the idea of the card is supposed to be. It's a it's a terrifying card. You play it, and oh man, uh, your opponent's looking through his hand. Well, I better have removal, or I'm gonna lose very soon. But because of this Pina, you just lose immediately when it's played most of the time. Uh, sometimes it's the second dragon, but the fact that remains that they can still do like ten damage to you with enough mana, which is a bit nasty. And because you can have a lot of mana in this game. It's always this card that just has this ridiculous damage potential, which is not what I want the card to be. But again, without basic Dispina, it's not nearly as problematic. Because it does give you a turn to deal with it. That said, your opponent playing Dragon doing 10 damage and then playing a second Dragon doing another 10 damage. Yeah, that's kind of lame because you can't really stop it. Unlike Reflectors, you can take Reflectors out of hand. You can destroy them when they're on the board, but Dragon can just burn you to death but if again if like horizons didn't exist if despina didn't exist i'm sure nobody would really have a problem with the card so i think it's probably more of like a side effect of despina being what it is because up until that it's never really been that big of an issue like we all respected red dragon as a powerful card but it was never really played that much not nearly as much as you'd think mostly because you couldn't really like 
use rage to do it without a burning rage. And once burning rage got nerfed, like you could never really run a deck like that. And New Horizons was more efficient, anyways. But I like Red Dragon to remain as this because it's an awesome card, and I think it probably is okay as long as you can't gain get too much mana. It's probably fine, but it's still something to consider. But that's why it's it's a small offender. It's a small problem in the Despina deck because if you took out the dragon then the dragon combo that just goes back to what it originally was just the wisdom dominion shell with these really efficient cards and they probably just run like lamps instead of this along with scatterer's bidding the bidding provides healing and they just use lamps to burst you down they play a little differently but not that much changes and we've experienced vamp lamp not much fun is it so that's just what they'd be doing i think so that's why I don't think the dragon is that big of an issue, but it deserves a mention. Now we're moving on to the good stuff. Oh, <laughs> basic Despina, everybody's favorite hero, right? So, I think it goes without saying that the potential for brokenness with this hero is really up there. And this really was uh, explored by Baldwin, whom I ran into on Ranked. And he was playing this like an o uh, OTH variant, one turn heal with basic Despina. You know, normally you use advanced Neferos, but the idea was, while he had less capacity to remove board because he didn't have that shock hero power, because he had this hero power, he could pull off some really ridiculous combos. Like drop two, re drop two reflectors, refresh, word of grace, word of grace, word of grace for a 30 heal. Yeah, that was fun. Now, to be fair, I was playing shamans. It was actually an amusing game, but the point is... A hero like this can only be one of two things. Absolute trash or overpowered, basically. And the other issue is that this is not a basic ability. If you look at the other basic heroes, their effect happens and that's it. It's, okay, draw a card. Reduces speed on a creature for one turn. Stop it from blocking. Uh, what else? Give something swift or summon a militia. But this, this is like a whole different ball game. This is not a basic hero power. Right? It's a very much an advanced hero power. Actually, Coronis is the one that feels more basic than this because it just summons a raven, right? Now, it's pretty powerful, but it's it's a simpler ability to understand. You just summon a raven. That's also why Coronis is so popular in draft because it's the most straightforward of the three corruption heroes, whereas this is strictly combo wombo. And of course, Despina enabling Red Dragon, but as I learned... The Spina is it's just going to be broken one way or the other. The moment any card is released that has the ability pay mana to do something good, basic the Spina is probably going to break it. Because being able to generate like 7 mana or 8 mana in a game where most cards don't cost more than 4 is a little silly. I mean, in the days of Vamp Lamp, you could do something like play a lamp, play Vampirism, refresh, play another lamp, and then hit twice. With both lamps. Or if you want it to be really, really fun, play a Cataclysm and then a lamp, then refresh, play a Vampirism, play a Vampirism, play another lamp, and hit the face for 10. Good times. So, Despina just makes all these other problems, like, explode and get bigger. So, I am 100% sure that this hero power probably needs to be just completely redesigned. Just so that it... It follows the basic theme where it's something simple. It happens one time, you move on. I'm not even sure a hero power that says refill your mana should even exist at all. Because generating a lot of mana really quickly is dangerous. And <laughs> I think the Spina has proved that. So, of course, it's one of the big offenders. Now, if you took away the Spina, what would happen, right? Would all of our problems be solved? Well, of course not, because... You would probably run Advanced Despina. And while that does feel a bit more fair, because you're not like instantly killing your opponent with a 25 damage dragon, base the Advanced Despina, as it used to be run, would just be the same thing. You know, you know, Lamps, Cataclysm, Carthuses, all the powerful cards. And then in addition to that, they'd just be stealing your creatures. Now, Advanced Despina hasn't really been played much because you just use basic Despina, and it's much better because you have very powerful tempo swings. Especially now that the hero power is on a three turn cooldown, you will use it as early as you can to get a, you know, get a tempo lead by getting a freebie assassinate or a freebie horizons. 
and then it won't be long before you have it available again for a dragon combo. Yeah. Now this card is one of the biggest issues right now, no doubt. But don't think that it's the only problem. Even if we deal with it, Wisdom Dominion as a whole will still remain because of the many other components that it has. Such as... Cataclysm, everybody's favorite board clear. Now, Cataclysm is probably the single most complained about cards. And it makes sense because it's a destroy all creatures spell. It's the only spell that comes even close to the power of doing that. The next closest being something like Advanced Darius. Oh, I'm sorry, Advanced Zash, which does 3 damage to everything. But that's not the same because there's a lot more creatures now that have more health than 3. But Cataclysm is just an instant solution to all your problems. So it's very easy to feel oppressed when you play against this because you try to develop a board, they blow you away with Cataclysm and then, you know, if you try to play one creature at a time, they've got Karthus, they've got Helm, they got Prinha. So it feels like you can't do anything. But, and here's the counterpoint, while there's no doubt that Cataclysm is probably too good, if Cataclysm didn't exist, now Dominion would probably be fine because they still got plenty of removal. What I'm worried about is... Without Cataclysm, how in the world do we deal with big boards? What happens when your opponent plays a Grand Reunion, drops, let's say, the uh, Life Force Incarnate, and then a second one, and then like the 4-4 Elder, and then puts like another big creature into play? How are you going to deal with that board without Cataclysm? What other board clear do you have available that'll do anything against that board? Or if they have a bunch of giant angels... The only other thing you could try to do is just run a bunch of freezing effects and combine it with Advanced Zash and the Rage spells. Now, the deck like that has existed, where you just ran all the Rage Burn spells, like Fireball, Dragonfire, Fire Blast, and then you added Flash Freeze. And now Power Discharge would certainly be played. And you had a decent amount of removal. But that's, that's all you could do. Without Cataclysm, we have no answer to really threatening boards. Soul Projection tries to do this. But Soul Projection only works to a point, and you need a creature, so you need to set it up. If we were to take away this card, decks with like Grand Reunion and just a lot of big creatures, you just wouldn't be able to come back. With, with Angels, you just wouldn't be able to beat their boards because they're all flying giant creatures, and Dominion has all the removal. Hard removal is something we need more of. Decent board clears is something we need more of. Some more ways... To deal with those cards. And this is especially important in a game like Spellweaver. Where creatures can't necessarily be used as removal. By comparison, if you take a game like Hearthstone. But what I mean, what I really mean when I say Hearthstone. Is a game that has the persistent damage combat system. That is to say when a creature takes damage. It stays damaged throughout the entire time. In that kind of game, creatures can just be used to remove other creatures. If your opponent plays a big creature... Maybe you just need two smaller ones to run into it and get rid of it. So even if you don't have removal, you can kind of remove it over time. In Spellweaver, that's not the case. One big creature could potentially bully several smaller ones, especially if it's flying, because you just can't attack it. And it can attack your guys one at a time. So it's especially important to give more decent removal options so that you don't just lose to like one big thing on the back row. Basically, the point I'm trying to say is, while Cataclysm is probably a problem, it's kind of like a band-aid to a bigger problem. The fact that the, the removal is not well distributed right now. Dominion is actually the only aspect that's, act that's well developed, and this is going to sound weird, but Dominion, if you look at it, has, it has a card draw engine with Metropolis. It's got a good board clear. Cataclysm. It's got good single target removal. It's got, you know, big bomb cards like Karthus and Prinha and bidding even. You, and you've got early game aggro. It's the only aspect I feel that's like fully fleshed out that is, you know, there's access and options, whatever they need to do, whereas every other aspect is lacking something. And board clears is something we've been severely lacking in the game. The expansion tried to help a little bit, but the distributed mechanic turned out to just be not effective enough. Generally, once the board gets too big, cards like Cannonade just become useless because your opponent can distribute the damage in such a way where they lose minimum amount of creatures. And yeah, you just can't deal with a board. You need a sp you need more spells like this 
in more aspects, but maybe that aren't as devastating. The closest comparison we have is Infernal Tribute in Corruption, which is just force your opponent to sack two creatures. And that's also a five mana spell, <laughs> and it's just too slow. That's why it isn't played. But that's the kind of card I'm talking about. Decent hard removal options, ways to deal with a big board. Because without Cataclysm, you just, you're just not going to have answers to stuff like that. And you basically are going to have to play that kind of game. Where if they play a big board, well, I hope you've got a big board, you've got a lot of removal, or you'll never be able to beat it. There just won't be any way to come back against a crushing board. Because you can't just put your own creatures on the board. Your opponent will get good trades and often kill your board without losing anything of their own. So, yeah, it's a tough situation. Um... Um, it's one I'm hoping the mini expansion that's coming is going to help. We, we don't need that many cards. We just need a few specific cards. I'm also hoping they buff some of the board clears. So that it so you don't have to play Dominion to have access to efficient removal. So that we can nerf Cataclysm. Because right now we, we kind of can. We need it for the moment. Until it's dealt with. Now back to the topic. Why is Cataclysm enabling Dragon Combo? It's because without Cataclysm... Ramping with Horizons and Power Surge would be bad because, well, you lost like three turns worth of tempo and you have no card to catch you up. You just lose. So you basically, if Cataclysm didn't exist, you simply wouldn't run Horizons and Power Surge. You would run early game creatures to contest the board and probably more removal. So it would, it would change. Maybe it would be okay. Maybe it wouldn't necessarily be bad. But again, the problem would remain of a lot of decks would just not be able to deal with things like Antriel. Because they just don't have removal that can kill it. So, that's my two cents on Cataclysm. I know it's an easy card to hate. Trust me, I hate it too. But it feels like that's the only answer you have a lot of the time to really aggressive boards. We gotta live with it for the moment. And the last card, Scatter is Bidding. My main beef with this card is that all it does is heal you. Yeah, it might sometimes burn your opponent, but mostly all it does is heal you. It's almost like a substitute for vampirism. Like, if if dragon didn't exist, you could just play this with lamps, and you'd have the healing that you need, and you'd have lamps to beat down your opponent. You don't even need lamps, necessarily, because bidding can heal you, like, 4 or 5 HP per turn. If you just defend yourself for a while, you could achieve the 40 life win condition with this card. So, it's kind of anticlimactic for the same reason I kind of dislike not the 40 life win condition altogether. So this card basically makes it that if you don't have spell removal, you basically are helpless. Because they'll play Cataclysm, they'll clear your board, and then they're healing like 3 or 4 HP per turn. And if you're like a mid-range deck, what are you going to do? You can never put enough pressure on the board to keep up. They'll just heal everything back, and you cannot do a control game against them. Because they've got, you know, Cataclysm, Helm, and all that other stuff. So yeah. That's my issue. While I understand that, you know, control decks do want healing so they can, you know, kind of fight back against aggro. But I feel like they should be doing this, but just running more early cards. Bidding probably wouldn't be nearly as obnoxious without Horizons because it would take some time to play it. You know, it would take real effort to get to it. And maybe you wouldn't have room for a card like this. I, I don't really know. It's something that's really cool to test out with uh, the Fuzzy Bolt challenges because in that I can just ban whatever card I don't like and then see how the decks actually work without it. From what experience I've had with Fuzzy Bolts, it works out okay actually. So I, I am actually going to try to get more of those going with more people. Now that we have more cards, we can see how, you know, how these decks work if we ban like, you know, if we ban like Chicken and Horizons, if we ban Cataclysm, if we ban Red Dragon or something, right? Like, what kind of... How are decks going to get along then? That'd be interesting. And that's really the main reason why I created the challenge. But anyways, back to bidding. Yeah, you know what? Bidding, again, wouldn't be as bad if Cataclysm didn't exist. That's why it's a smaller offender, while Cataclysm is a bigger offender. Because bidding is what you use to kind of stabilize after you clear the board with Cataclysm. If you don't have Cataclysm... It doesn't matter if you're healing because your opponent has a bunch of creatures on the board. They're going to beat your face in every turn. So, baiting is not going to save you then. Actually, I think it's the second effect that bothers me as well. The the death clock on your opponent where they lose life whenever they play uh, mana. 
I think part of the problem is that a lot of aspects just don't have access to any healing at all. It's actually Dominion that has the best and most efficient healing because a lot of it is tied into removal, like with Karthus and Cathedral, or this card. Order has Word of Grace. Yeah, Order has a lot of healing because of Word of Grace. And other than that, it's Corruption with Succubus? That's it. You know, Kayano decks have no healing, right? Most nature decks have no healing. Wisdom wisdom has no healing. Like just it, it goes along with what I was saying. We could use more of these versatile cards to give to other aspects so that you can kind of make your deck more flexible, more adaptable. Because right now the aspects are limited by what they can do. There are certain even color combos that just can't do certain things. And Scatterdor's Bidding gives you a lot of healing, gives you the opportunity to burn your opponent. And again, it probably wouldn't be so bad if Cataclysm didn't exist or if you could just play it differently. Also, it gets, you know, it gets really punished by Unicorn. So, Spell Removal is another issue where, because currently Spell Removal is not very good, like, Unicorn is really the main card because Ray of Righteousness is hard to put into a deck. Uh, you can kind of get away with playing spells. The moment spell removal gets better, Skydor's bidding will probably just disappear because you'll be punished too hard for having this removed by like a unicorn or something. So that's probably not ever going to be that big of an issue because it's just a matter of those kind of cards like unicorn coming back to the meta. Like if nature gets more tools where they can kind of survive on their own, they have access to a card like Call of July which can just search out unicorn and deal with it instantly. So it's a small offender, but it's a card that annoys me. But again, it's it's a combination of kind of all of these cards a little bit. The big offenders are, of course, Despina because of the, the ability to just reload mana. And I think New Horizons just kind of makes all of this possible. Power Surge is probably, probably okay because it just gives you mana. And you don't start drawing cards until later. And I think just Power Surge isn't enough ramp to justify, like, not running early game at all. But anyways... Let me know what you think. What other cards do you think are a problem? And, you know, we're, we're strictly talking about this this deck. So saying things like, you know, maybe Hartsford. Yeah, probably. But that's a different kind of discussion. Anyways, uh, thanks for listening. I know I've been talking a lot. I've been trying to get this off my chest. I've been talking a lot with some players, especially Laurentiel, who... Laurentiel is definitely on the anti-Despina train. Because... Yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty understandable, and I respect his opinion greatly. He's possibly one of the most knowledgeable players in the game right now, along with a few others, so I'm just going to go along with them. But yeah, those are my two cents on the six cards. I, wanna, I want to play different decks without having to constantly worry about Cataclysm and instantly losing the combos, and New Horizons just always outrunning me. I'm tired of these games where my opponent plays three horizons and is like four turns worth of mana ahead of me. And at the time when I'm playing like my first library guards, they're playing Silencer or Skydor's Bidding or Karthus. That just doesn't seem very fair to me, honestly. I feel like gaining aspects should be a more uh, respectable thing to do. Anyways, in case in case I wasn't being too obvious, this is this is, my, my main rant is honestly against this card. I think more than anything, even though I understand these other cards are probably problematic, New Horizons is the card that bugs me the most. And you wouldn't think so because I played it a lot in the casual Darius deck. But again, the problem was always that you you were too reliant on New Horizons to fix all your problems. So. I'm going to stop now because otherwise I'm never going to shut up about this. Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you guys next time. Hopefully in a uh, happier video than this one was. Cheers.